Hello, everybody. This is the one and only Mr. LP of Enlivening Global Media, and we are here live day after 9-11 on September 12th. And I appreciate all of you joining us and things. We don't get a chance to do this too often as with a collection of wonderful, intelligent people. And I am wonderfully honored to have two wonderful, beautiful women, two of my best friends out there that's been riding and died and stays behind me with my butt and everything else when I do right and wrong. They just don't understand I'm always right. But but uh, anyway, the two of you, I don't know where it shows on the camera for everybody, but I have, I'll start with the youngest first. So, Arthur Tracy Hardy Scott, <laughs> the welcome. How you doing today? Good evening, Mr. LP. <laughs> and uh, the other young lady here is uh, Vicky J. How you doing today? I'm good, Stephen. How are you? I'm doing all right. I wanted to have this little bit, a brief little powwow um, because there's been a lot of different things going on. And, you know, we talked individually, but we didn't get a chance to share publicly. And I know we have some additional thoughts. Um, first and foremost, let me give a shout out and big congratulations to you, Ms. Vicky J, on um, your uh, upcoming uh, wonderful addition to your family and things. So thank you and congratulations to you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, I usually talk about other things besides um, current events, but this one, the last couple of things, this one is just too much on your heart. The first one is just um, the situation with Ms. Kanika Jenkins. Uh, but unfortunately, those who may not have heard, this young lady lives in the suburbs of uh, Chicago where she went out with some friends and unfortunately, uh, a lot of stuff happened. Some of it we do know, some of it we don't know. And uh, she went out drinking, possibly some other, um, other things going on. We do know of marijuana use. We do know the drinking. The toxicology reports is not out yet. And either the autopsy is finished. But she was found um, in a freezer, frozen, um, and dead. Uh, there has been various reports of that, how she supposedly got to nine floors into a refrigerator door and frozen, what have you. Subsequently, um, there have been various tapes sporadically released by different people and shared throughout social media and also the local news on various audio recordings. We've had very talented people throughout the nation and the world that's used various audio programs and stripped other things. You can hear this poor woman crying out in pain and then other people just ignoring it. And it just seems like a very big setup. And uh, to see something like that is very horrible. To see that's just a demonic spirit to set somebody up. This is not a situation where someone's pimping a bunch of young women and things like that. These are young adults. Some may be younger, some may be older. We don't have confirmation of everybody's ages. This is beyond horror and something that no woman in this world should have to wake up to and get a phone call. Uh, ladies, uh, Vicky J, I will start with you. Um, what are your thoughts with this man? Well, um, when I opened up Twitter during my lunch break at work to check on what I always check on, um, I started to see people asking, you know, why isn't this girl, uh, why isn't her story viral? What's going on here? And I was like, oh my God, like, who is this? And the more, like, I hit on, the, I clicked on the hashtag uh, Kanika Jenkins, and um, that's when I saw what happened, and I, or, you know, everybody was talking about it. And I just, you know, I am pregnant, as you mentioned, with a girl, and my motherly instinct kicked in, and I thought to myself, oh my God, if I, I don't know what I would do if I ever got a call after, oh no, no, not even, I'm sorry, the girls that she went to the hotel with, because um, they're in college, they're 19, or she's 19, Kamika was 19, um, and they, um, you know, came back without her. And I just, I feel like the, my instant thought would just probably be that something happened to my child. Like, why, why, why are y'all back and where's my child? Like, what's going on here? And um, God, to just, I really just don't know what I would do. I, I know what I would do. Like, I have an idea of what I would do, but I'm not going to implicate myself today because um, I would. Absolutely. It would take all of Mother Nature. It would, it, you know, we're going to talk about it later. It would take something like, like a Harvey to really keep me from these kids. I just would lose it. 
-hmm. if like especially seeing the footage mm -hmm. i couldn't bring myself to press play not at work because i was already on the verge of tears and just reading about what happened to this girl that um people had screenshots of the text messages that they actually um apparently she rejected a young man and he wanted to get her back for rejecting him and paid the girls that i guess didn't like her anyway according to the text messages they paid paid them two hundred dollars to basically bring her to her death and um a lot of people are saying you know and even myself at first said be careful who your friends are well these people obviously weren't her friends but i think that what needs more attention in this situation is the misogyny and rape culture that exists within these young men who were um because it was more than one guy and um and there, and there were men and women in this space at the time that this happened and um there were a couple of facebook live videos i guess of the like two from two girls i think who were um i guess trying to create alibis for themselves and saying that they didn't actually touch her or whatever or they weren't involved in her death but um one of the girls can be seen holding back tears like she was afraid to do something um and then you can hear another girl in the background saying, you know, you didn't have to rape her. And then, you know, there was some back and forth about that. Um, but the tone in the room was that this girl, this Tanique, um, I'm sorry, Kanika, deserved this somehow, like deserved what was happening to her and the lack of humanity and like conscience, it seems, of these young people, it, it, it screams of the condoning of rape culture and, and, and victim blaming and, you know, hatred for women, like subconscious hatred for women. Um, I mean, all these, all these children got mamas, every last one of them. And so I just don't understand I just don't understand how you can do this to somebody. She is somebody's child. Very much. I don't care whether you like her or not. You know, somebody, you don't somebody. sell somebody to death for two hundred dollars. That's trash. And I think that everybody in that room, every single one of y'all, I don't care if you touched her or you had something to do. Like everybody in that room is guilty. I agree. I agree. They were trying. They were trying. Current, current. Was maybe was I, I, I don't know. Just from all the information, it seemed like she was trying to fit in, or or she was friends with this girl and with two mutual friends. It just seemed that they were too happy to uh, take advantage of this young girl and just sit there and knowing how bad things are. To see a uh, hear, it was like it was like five, six women in that room. How in the world? And then plus the women that got into how in the world? So there's no definite opposite. How could you figure as a woman to imagine this could have been your woman? This could be your sister, your cousin, your baby sister, and you are comfortable with it. And then there was this young girl that was trying to do, for whatever reason, kill herself on the camera and Absolutely. Absolutely. I know, um, I know Ms. Del P, you were having a little technical difficulty um, with your speaker, but I, I agree with Vicki. Um, having, having a child already, right now an adult, but at his birth, go ahead if you can hear me. I can hear you. At his birth, I determined then that this would be the one thing that I would die for, that I would kill for, that I would be very under a jail for if you mess with me. And so I'm like Vicky, getting that call, I, I'm clear at what I would do. And unfortunately, 
it would be a lot of mothers probably burying their children. Um, the problem that I have with this is one thing is, is that it's terrible what happened to this young lady. Absolutely. Absolutely terrible. But I don't want to make a scene out of her because some accountability, not the accountability for her death, absolutely not, but the accountability that these are the things that as a parent, we teach our children. We teach our children not to trust everybody, everybody that smiles in your face is not your friend, okay? That people will sit at your table and eat and stab you in the back at the same time, okay? So somewhere along the line in looking at her mother's interview, she forgot whose child she was. And she forgot not to put herself in a situation to be in endangered, okay, by going to a hotel room, wanting to get high and to hang out, number one. Number two is I agree with Vicky that to me, everybody in there should be in jail. Every single person that was in there is accountable for that child's death, whether, like Vicky said, whether they touched her whether the one that made the phone call, the one that was doing the videotaping, the one that was holding her down, every single person, play, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Everybody played a role to put that piece of puzzle together that caused this child's death. Um, I'm really shocked that a franchise as huge as the Crown Plaza was so laid back and lots lacks of days ago because these kids were smoking weed, they were loud and they were drinking in a room. Now we have all seen hotels where we know that at best when somebody raises their voice or whatever, hotel security is knocking on the door or they're calling you know upstairs from the front desk because someone's out of So I'm really curious as to why that didn't transpire. Now, that may very well have happened or may not because we were told that one of the young people that were in the room actually worked for the hotel. So maybe, you know, what was the, at the front desk was a friend because we did see the young lady with the sunglasses answer the phone a couple of times and give the room number and things of that nature. So maybe that's the case. The other problem that I have with is is that we are not, we are adults, we're not children. We know that the child did not wander down nine flights into a kitchen, into a freezer, and fall asleep from a drunken stupor and die. We, we're clear with that. Okay, that's just, that doesn't even logically make sense. They would have had a better chance of finding an elevator shaft with this freeze a non-storm down. That doesn't even make any sense. So either she was led there, she was dragged there, or she was taken there after she was killed somewhere in that hotel. The other problem that I have is that with a franchise like the Crown Plaza, where is all of the footage from the hotel lobby, from the elevator? Because hotels like that, from the time you walk in the front door, so you get up into your room and stick the card key in the door, your your monitor. They know your every movement. So why can't they clock this child coming out of this room unaccompanied? You know what I'm saying, guys? Going downstairs, going through. How does she get access to the kitchen? Because the kitchen was closed at that time of day. How does she even know where to find the kitchen in the hotel? Because, I mean, usually, let's just call it what it is. When you're talking about a hotel like the Crown Plaza, this is a hotel that has Emergency exit strategies for political. These are not easy access areas that just anybody can walk into because normally 50% of the time, when anybody political stays in a hotel, if they have to evacuate or they have to come through, they come through the kitchen. Okay? Mm -hmm. How did this child get access to the kitchen? How did she not end up on the eighth floor, the seventh floor, the sixth floor? Right? So there's a lot of loopholes in this story. And I agree with Vicky that um, one of the things that Facebook has done is it's been a good tool but a bad tool because for me, the young lady with the sunglasses, midway through her video, I wanted to put life out of her, okay? Because she became less human to me and more something that needed to be exterminated like a roach. She had no compassion, no emotion. As a young woman, as a woman, I can't even phantom as a woman.
and everything else as a young lady to sit there and listen to someone even that you despise be violated okay and brutalized and choked and not have any emotions about it you're crazy there is absolutely something wrong with this person it's something is it does it that rape is not something that you even wish on your worst enemy you know what I'm saying that's that, that's just not something that we do as women okay and then to everybody now is getting on Facebook live and um, videos and trying to remove themselves from the situation I was there but I was there but I didn't do that it's guilt by association so as far as I'm concerned mr. LP I agree with you everybody in that room should be brought up on charges as accessories when they find out who killed this child they're all guilty of murder all their child's blood is on everybody's hand and as for me unfortunately I'm like Vicki I seen it at work but I was foolish and I clicked on the link at work and I literally had to shut down my office because I started to cry it shook me to my core that kid and you know we talked about this once before on a show that IDGAF generation that I don't give up generation and this is it these kids what what kind of kids are we raising and for Vicky how does that make you feel that you're bringing a daughter into a world like this where kids are hanging kids and killing kids and walk away like nothing's wrong I don't really um I don't really anticipate that I will let my child do a lot of things without my supervision. And she can hate me if she wants to. That I don't give a damn. <laughs> and, and, and it get- Honestly, that is that whole you brought up the lynching incident recently. That eight-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a young seven-year-old girl last year who also was practically lynched. Uh, when we were still doing the woke squad, we talked about how she had like open, like just like him, open wounds on her neck with fragments of rope still in them. And not only, I just, the audacity is why I do these like nervous laughs because this child was must have been bleeding because her flesh was open. And she wasn't, like they didn't call her mama. They sent her home the next day. She had to stay overnight with these little And monsters. so think about that. We talk about, and that's the key word, people. monsters. We have children who think that it's okay to pour scalding hot water in the face of a child oh while she sleeps because you're mad because she went to sleep and she says something. We have a child that has now been murdered in a hotel for probably the most stupidest reason in the world, okay? We have an eight-year-old that has been lynched. What, what is happening to our children? Because this is, people have gotten comfortable. This is where I remember two arguments that that we've we've had online with other people. One where people say all the time they tired of certain slave movies or movies reminding of the past. And my thing is is that if you forget about them, you darn to commit them in the future. And we're seeing that right now where people have a lack of respect and appreciation for just life, even for yourself, even for your own community, even for your own generation, race, people are doing this to their own family members. And, you know, the, the, without those memories of how we were treated or how your ancestors were treated or just another soul down the street, it don't even have to be by color, just another soul in the street starving how what kind of man or woman are you today to be comfortable i understand not everybody can help the way we want to help but there's always another opportunity to do something and to feel comfortable today to lynch somebody this shows that where there's obviously a lack of education which starts in the home that they're not talking about these things with these kids because if you did and understood the horrors much less what you get in school if they teaching it in schools these days because i don't believe they are uh, it's glossed over because and Mr. LP, I think it, I I have to go with Vicky on the terminology of monsters. Okay. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I don't. I don't I think that education has absolutely. I think that the the thing that's missing here is empathy. It, exactly. No, 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 it's right. not any of the other stuff 
hasn't, th there was never a time where this no. has slowed down. No, 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 I agree with you. So that whole back in the day, it used to be this way. That's not true. No, I'm, it just wasn't as public. It wasn't on video. Right, we didn't All have social this media. stuff has been consistently going on, no. whether or not it was in a history book, whether or not um, people talked about it, whether or not you got an after school special about it. It's always been there. Um, but the thing is, what is not being taught, like the thing that's missing is discipline. That's, the key. that's, the key that's, that's what's what missing is. here. The difference between what it was and what it is now is and discipline. And I firmly believe in people exactly. like parents standing up in their ish and like, honestly, I'm chin checking your ass if you do something to my baby. I don't care. I don't care about the, the arrests or whatever. You're going to get clocked if you don't check your baby straight up. And, and, and I agree. Absolutely. And the, the, the other thing about it is that key point and that key component, I agree with Vicky, is the discipline and the lack thereof. Okay. And I personally believe that some of this is the accountability of the United States government for getting involved with parents, not being afraid, mm -hmm. afraid to parent their children, okay? That we've not drawn what the fine line between abuse and discipline is, okay? And now what's happened is they've created these monsters and now they want us to fix it. It is unheard of. It is unheard of that children, you know, I agree with Vicky that there was always something that was out there that was going on. And we had our little sadistic kids that set cats and things on fire and all of that too. But those behaviors got recognized and they got dealt with immediately, okay, by family members, by, you know, outside authorities or whatever. But now, exactly, workers. now we live in this, not my baby, not my problem. And it doesn't become our damn problem until our children are dying in refrigerators mysteriously, okay? And our children right. are being hung. And then it goes back to, think about this, okay? Where was the discipline that all of these kids, okay, they were 19 years old. I get that, okay? But where was the accountability that they were 19-year-old young adults all piled up into a hotel room? Now, I remember being at 19, and I remember us wanting to get a hotel room to check in and hang out, and the hotel was like, oh, hell no. We're not having a whole bunch. You can't even give a slumber party for a group of kids that want to have a pajama party in the hotel without an adult being there. Okay, because the hotel is not going to allow that. We're not talking about Doc in a Bach Hotel, Super 8. We're talking about the Crown Plaza. And you have to have a, see, this is where a lot of underhand stuff was going on because usually you have to have a credit card or, or well, Absolutely. back then, it was a credit card by somebody 25 and older or at least 21 and older. So something mm -hmm. else was going on. Now, I know that the lines are blurred these days and people just care for money, but there was there's a lot going on. There's fingerprints that somebody has to lift the body to put it in there. There's stuff going on and the thing, the other part about this is where I was saying is that, like you said, we've gotten too much of don't tell me what to do society. Don't, don't let our parents get involved. Don't let the churches get involved. All these other things when it comes to that kept the structure in the community and it broke down. And like you said, now you strip all of that away. Now you want to throw all these social workers in to fix the best support to teachers. No pay, no support. And then we, we and I get it. There was abuse. But you swung the pendulum so far over without giving clear lines. Now we don't know. So everybody's just going for what you know. And don't tell me and that with these children, with everybody in that room, I promise you, they displayed some sadistic types of behaviors somewhere before. And it was recognized, whether it was in their own family tree, whether it was in school, whether it was in their social setting or whatever. They didn't just arbitrarily just all come to a hotel room and decide that they were all going to be complete freaking idiots. This is something that they this was exactly, this was free. And you can hear it in the conversation, or I'm sorry, you can exactly. read it in the conversation and in their comments that followed the incident. The young man, one of the one of the guys, wrote some stuff on his Facebook page and then later took it down. But he basically said he she deserved everything she got. And I feel like who, yes, deserves, who deserves to die? Okay. Now a couple of people did turn yeah. themselves in. Well, two two people turned themselves one in. One girl tried to commit suicide lady, or something. Suicide or lie. And this is now again. If you're going to commit Why suicide. Are you going live? 
Thank you. To me, it was more like you yeah, this neatness, draw for yeah. kind of attention. You know, trying to say that she's remorseful you know for what happened. It, it goes back to, and, and, and I'm like, Vicky, when you talk about chin checking a kid, okay, let me tell you something. I give no dams. Cry all the hell that you want. For every tear that you shed, think about that child that died. I don't feel sorry for their asses. Their asses all need to be convicted. Throw their ass up underneath the jail because as far as I'm concerned, they're a waste of life. There is no redeemable qualities within you. Any woman that could stand there and let someone be violated and don't have a problem with it, you have mental issues. You need to be institutionalized and you need to get help. And we, uh, we, we've got to stop feminizing these young men and pampering them and make them realize that they are men. They have an accountability that no means no and rejection is okay. I mean, I've buried, you know, Mr. LP, three of my residents already that used to live in my property because some man couldn't take no. I don't want to be with you anymore. I know, you know, back when we were kids, we quit each other and we quit each other and we may have been mad, but we went on. It did not equate to a death sentence. Right. Now, now, before we go to the next topic, I have to ask this question because it's been brought up, um, and, and it's a reasonable question. It's just not a question that I wish we never can get to. Should they get life? Do they? How long in jail? Does this manslaughter, or to me, it's murder? And do everybody else get manslaughter or accessory? You know what? What should be the penalty? Should they just be given institution because they all going to be tried as an adult? But will they all get institution now? Has to you say they need to be helped. So, what should the penalties should be for this? Because everybody in the world is looking at this, and this is going to be used as a guideline for a lot of different things down the line. And some people will, oh, and we don't even know all the, we don't, we don't even have all the details going on with this. Now, for situations, I don't want everybody to kind of. I throw a blank state or blank slate over this. If you did this like Kanika, then we're going to do the same thing for everybody else that has similar situation with all the other variables. What should be the punishment for the, uh, all these people? Now, for, for me, for the gentleman, I'm, you know, I've been a person that's been pounding the thing. I am not for the death penalty, but this is one of those few times where I'll be doggone near it because of the simple, the only reason why I don't like it is because it's used improperly, especially when it comes to people of color. But in this situation, it's doggone near it where I'd rather get you out the country. To me, this is ter terrorism. This is domestic violence. You need to be out the country, lose your citizenship stuck on an island with animals and let you go for the with a plastic knife. I mean, I don't even want, I don't even want to pay taxes for you and things. The only thing I feel like doing is praying for you because there's that demon spirit that made you said this was okay. And then that also spirit could be in other members in your family that may not have done it yet, but may have thought about it and things like that. And I don't want that spirit to go on to anybody else. That I will pray for you, but the rest of it, I rather you out the country. I don't even want our taxes going to you. Um, I do want to just um, emphasize that I mean, we called them kids a couple of times, but they are adults. Yes. Um, Excuse me. They're adults according to the law. Now, mentally, I do think they're still kids um, because our brain continues to develop until age of twenty-five which is why I think we need to reevaluate when we consider young people adults. So but uh, how do you say that when you, we're living in an age where people can go to war at 17, 18 years old? 18. Right, that's why I'm, I'm, I feel that way across the board. I've, I've always felt that way. I worked in a community outreach and when I was 18 we, for the Anti-Tobacco League, we went and um, tried to buy cigarettes just to test whether or not people were carding people. And there were plenty of times we busted people for selling to us, even though you can legally sell to an 18 year old, you have to have valid ID and I didn't, or I would say I didn't and I would get it anyway. I did this from the age of 17 until I was 19. Can't tell you how many times people got fined. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there. The point is no, I understand. being old enough to buy cigarettes at 18 and vote and go to war, but you can't drink. It's just backwards. I just honestly feel like both are stupid. I shouldn't be able to get married. I shouldn't be able to go vote. I shouldn't be able to do none of this stuff 
until my brain is fully developed and I've had enough experience in life. And I like give them some freedoms, but don't because what happens, and I've done this myself at 18, and I'm pretty sure we all did. I'm 18, I'm grown. Let me turn up. Let me da 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 da. And you just you're still young minded and you're still gonna make these stupid young people mistakes. And you're still gonna, you know, especially with puberty. I'm not excusing these boys. I want to say that for the record, okay? Never would I ever excuse their behavior. What I am saying is they need more time in the home to be raised. All these young girls and boys need more time in the home. We need to stop pretending that they're never going to have sex and talk to these kids about sex. And we need to talk to them about consent. And we need to start talking to them about, and in and, and real conversations, not right. this passive birds and bees crap. You got to right. get real. Because they are developed before they're developed. But they weren't even. So we but, really need to like. Sorry. No, I said. But to see, you saying put them back in a home, but obviously no, the no, home no, wasn't. She wasn't talking problem. about that in general. What she was saying is on her point that not giving these kids all of these freedoms at eighteen years old. Right. Because be in the home. They're holding on to this idea of being adults until real stuff like this right. happens. And then, it, and then all of a sudden it's. I'm just 19 and right. I just uh, you know they're gonna be sitting up there sobbing right. and crap in in the courtroom talking about you know you know my life is ahead of me and blah, blah, blah. it's just like but you just took the life of another 19 year old and you were and, and and your mind told you this made sense the whole time you know I don't like the chick anyway so you know sure I get you give me 200 you could do what you want with her really though for real so who, who are you to determine this first of all right and second of all you would never want somebody to do this shit to you. You would never want this to happen to you. If one of them boys grabbed your ass and bent you over somewhere and tried to have that you, you would have been bugging out and begging for help just like she did. Like, where is the empathy? Where is your mind at? Boys, you wouldn't want somebody up in the cell to bend you over. You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, get it through your head. This is a human being. This is somebody who feels pain, who is able to say no to you and should be, there, there should be no consequences for her saying no to you. She rejected you, so you want to get her back? How are you getting her back? What did she do to you exactly? The way you get Hurt back. your feelings, you idiots? Like, I just really life. feel like this is so stupid, the reason behind why they did this to this girl. And real consequences have to come with that. So I struggle with you know, understanding where I was mentally at 19 years old and how many stupid things I did in my life up to the age of 25 and how I, a light bulb went on when I was 25 and I was like, let me stop doing stupid stuff, you know, and wanting to get my life together at that point and, and you know, actually being responsible. Like there's a real correlation between that. But as it stands right now in the law, they are adults. And the shit they did was sadistic and gross, Absolutely. and they need to they need to suffer consequences Absolutely. for it. So while I do think psychological evaluation is important here, I don't think that it should let them off the hook for what happened. No, I agree. I think that, and and by that I mean you're not going to a psychiatric ward; you're going to jail. And while you're in jail, you can go to that good old counselor and work that ish out. Hopefully, you get to a point in your life where you realize what you did and and how it affected everybody that it affected. And then maybe you could apologize at some point to the family, but your ass gonna rot. Should they? I think they should get life. Yes. I think that they should get life, and I think that they should, all of them, <laughs> even accessory yeah. to murder. I I don't feel like you should be able to, you shouldn't be able to live your life because yeah. she can't. That's how I feel. Yeah. And also because this is more than just you were there as an accessory. It's conspiracy because you were involved. You, Girl with the text messages, you go, you you in jail for life. There's federal, there's conspiracy, there's money transfer, there's money transfer. Exactly, oh. like there's a whole lot going on here. You could be brought up. The, the way that I look at this, Mister LP and Vicky, is when you play big girl, you expect to do big girl things, expect big girl consequences. And the bottom line is, when mm -hmm. you play adult, you deal with adult consequences. Okay. The bottom line is their asses need to be in jail for life, okay? There's the, that child doesn't get to go to finish graduating from college or 
to see what she wants to do in three to four to five years to have be blessed like Vicky and bring a child into this world. Everything stopped from the moment she walked into that hotel room. It was already determined what her life was going to end at. Okay, and so that much when you made that decision for her, you made the decision for yourself. I think that we have got to get out of this slapping kids on the wrist and well, well they'll they'll sit in jail and we'll pay all of this money for counselors and all of this stuff and then they'll get back out twenty to thirty years from now and hopefully they could no, this mother will never hold and talk to her daughter again. And y'all ask me to remind her, and I'll even go further. You need to be made to say her damn name every day. When your ass gets up in jail, you need to, somebody needs to be present to make sure to say, Kanika, forgive me. Every single day, you need to say, because what happens is she becomes a distant memory, okay? She becomes a distant memory, and then it becomes more about you and what you're enduring in jail and what you're going through under jail. You need to be reminded why the hell your ass is in jail, first of all. So you need to say, I, listen, I'm even not opposed Put her damn picture up in each one of their damn cells. They should be made to look at this girl's face every single day and know this dumbass decision right here is what got me here. Okay? So they be executed. So they all be given a uh, death penalty and just execute and That's be done it. with it. I'm not a big no. advocate of the death penalty at all because of the same situation that you are. But death is too fucking easy for them. Okay. Yeah, kill somebody, okay, then what? No, your ass needs to live in that five-by-five five cell every single day thinking about why you there. And just like Vicky said, your ass needs to be afraid every single morning. Are you going to become somebody's bitch up in this place? Is somebody going to be bending you over? Can you take a shower? It needs to be really uncomfortable. You don't get to go to no cushy plush little youth jail and stuff with some boot camp or whatever. You want to play big girl games. You want to play big boy games. You need you stomping with the big dogs. You need to hang out with the big dogs. That's just the way that I feel about it. I think that these kids have now become so out of control because they're so used to getting a pat on the wrist. Don't think for one minute that these little rugrats didn't talk to each other and say, well, if you do this, I'll cover this. But if we get caught, you're only 18. You're only 18. So you'll get this one. They've already, they've already done this. They, they, they knew this. This thing was plotted out to the max. So much so that you and knew how to dispose of her body. Right. And who, who's the, same, the, the only person? You got at the point that one of the people involved worked at the hotel. This is for me, this is conspiracy. Bring it because there, everybody had that. a hand that was in Absolutely. the hotel room from the exchange of money to the setup. Like, these people picked this girl yeah. up from her mama house. And the Crown Plaza, like, the Crown Plaza is complicit in this because there's a lot, all the safety checks and measures oh, were not The problem. mother and them, they're going to have a lawsuit of the yin yang. They'll probably have the Kanika Tower somewhere. Um, real, real soon. So we know that. Is the police talking about she got herself that, down there? I, I'm that, like a little bit. That's, that's just like crazy to me. But like, like Vicky said, just think about it. From the time they all got dressed that night, they knew what their plan was for the evening. Now we have all this planned to go gonna... out to dinner. We have planned to meet up with friends, but we don't know what the outcome of that evening is going to be. We plan to go to a restaurant sometimes and go to a restaurant and the service is terrible. Sometimes we go and we absolutely, it surpasses what we thought, right? Okay. These people got together and they knew by some time during that night, that child will breathe her last breath. And I honestly believe how the reason why they put her in the freezer is because of what Vicky just said a few minutes ago. That young, unmature mind just automatically thought that they know if you freeze something, it's not going to smell, it's not going, it's going to slow down the process because they panic after they did it. After they did it, they didn't think this thing all the way through. Like, okay, once she's dead, what are we going to do with her? How are we going to get her through the hotel lobby? How are we going to stick her in the freezer? The, 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 the question how they did that. The question how they, is, how they, is like also I want to know is how the girl died because 
there's two there's two things in here. One, somebody was holding her down, and there's video of raping this child, pictures and all this other stuff that needs to be captured. Two, how did the girl die? Because you hear the video saying, "Help me," blah blah blah. She was alive after the rape. So what transpired from the rape to she's dead? Did they just yeah. stab her, break her neck, do whatever? Maybe I, I was thinking it was a. I thought I thought that she died from yeah. being choked. That's what I thought from all accounts of what was posted or whatever. And it's like it got to the point. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it got to the point I had to step away from it because it started getting overwhelming. Because first of all, yesterday it was like back to back different posts, and you didn't know what was fact and what yeah. was fiction. Yeah. You didn't even know. I mean, some people were pulling up old videos of other things and merging them together and stuff. So it just got kind of like crazy to me and I had to fall back and take a, a woo-saw moment from it. But in response to what you said, Mr. LP, I don't care how she died. The fact of the matter is she died, okay? And whether she was shot, stabbed, choked, or whatever, you all plotted to kill her. You were successful in your efforts. And you need to go for the consequences of it, which to me is life in prison. Okay. And I think that her mother shall press for that whole heart, wholeheartedly, because, you know, now we're going to start seeing parents come out talking about how great their children were and everybody always loved them and they were misled by other people because now we got to go for the blame game because no one wants to have the brunt of this this cross to carry no one wants this cross to carry okay so now everyone wants to be exactly. if, one of the, if one of their parents actually told exactly. the truth just treat it like they do in drug trade rico law same thing here i don't see why you can't apply the same the reason I would, it would it would be so refreshing for one of them parents to go you know what i i, I felt like something like this might happen because my child right. is rotten to the core, core. but I, I would love to exactly but you know, i don't think it's all my happen. baby she was very naive and she started hanging out with the wrong crowd. Everyone wants to play the blame game because as a parent, nobody wants to admit that you raised a monster. Okay. But cause Jeffrey Dahmer had a parent. Okay. Gacy had a parent. Bundy had a parent. You see what I'm saying? Charles Manson had a parent, but we're clear of what they were. They were rotten to the core and it is time that we start treating rotten children if they're rotten to the core, it is what it is, okay? And they need to stop mm -hmm. start being treated this way, okay? Because they are, as far as I'm concerned, they are a threat to society. And, you, you know and what? So, as far as I'm concerned, they, exactly. I mean, what, what, did they have a list? Do they have a target of everybody that they don't like? Who was next? I mean, we don't know. Like, there was a time where, you know, in customs, you were, you were sent out to the woods on your own if you started acting out. I mean... Hey, this is you know that it was done in Native American, uh, Native people cultures, it was done in African culture. Yeah, there are quite a few uh, cultures that would just be like, all right, well, you ain't fit. You, you don't want to. You don't want to fall in line. Get your ass out of here, then. Exactly. Uh, again, this is in live and global media, September twelfth. Uh, sponsored by the Crossland Coleman Group, and I appreciate every uh, Crossland Coleman. Excuse me, the Crossland Coleman Group LLC, and I thank everybody for uh, watching this video. The second thing I wanted to uh, capture, and I take so much of your time, is all what's happened with the hurricanes and things. And I wanted to point it out um, a couple of good, uh, quick things. Um, and I know um, Miss Vicky J, you got to get going soon and things, but I wanted to. Uh, get your thoughts on it because I made a post about the lack of preparedness that we keep screwing the pooch. Uh, we, I was calling for it ages ago before the whole world and politics got in it, but I was calling for the military to get involved. That's what we paid them for, our taxes, and also um, we're not. We, there's an extreme. We we're pushing to get all these senior citizens into Florida to make the money and everything else. But when actually something bad happens, we're not, uh, we're not prepared. So I wanted to get your thoughts with all of this and things. And also the one last thing, I'm gonna beat that scuba driver who decided to go scuba diving in a hurricane. Somebody had to risk their lives to save you. They deserve jail. But <laughs> your thoughts, Vicky J? Um, as far as preparedness for the storms, um, I, did, I hadn't really thought about the fact that so many elderly people go to Florida and it's like hurricane central. 
I hadn't really thought about that, and I, I think that's a little odd. I can understand that the weather is good for them, you know, for arthritis, arthritic reasons and such. However, if we're thinking about precipitation aggravating arthritis, I don't know if it's the best place for them to be. Um, I don't know. The more I think about natural disasters, the more I feel like there's really nowhere you are safe in this country. Everybody got a problem. The Northeast has a has snow. Um, the S Central America has tornadoes. You know the the South and and you know Florida is part of the South, but the South has like hurricanes and mud mudslides and and flooding and things like that. Fires out, west. West. fires out west and earthquakes as well. So there's really not anywhere that you can really be safe. I mean, I don't even matter of being. But um, as far as preparedness, I will say this. I think the most prepared areas of this country have to be good old Northeast is one of the most prepared places as far as natural disasters. When I think about Massachusetts and I have lived here for a very long time, how much the, it, how much improvement I've seen in the way that they handle weather here, um, especially when we have snow, it has been like leaps and bounds. So Florida, hey, you guys know you have hurricane season, right? Like y'all know that. It's every year, like clockwork. So I just feel like, Absolutely. you know, this stuff is about to happen. What is your action plan for senior citizens? Like you said, what are your action plans for, um, you know, evacuation strategies? And, you know, what do your highways look like for getting people out of there? And, you know, you guys should have that all in order by now. I mean, Florida... This country has existed for darn near half a millennium. Yeah, Florida and Texas, to me, there's no excuse for what happened. And Old state. And then so what bothered me was... Texas, I can see it. I can see how the Texas situation happened. I really can. I can't see how Florida, who knows hurricanes, I don't understand how, how stuff is falling through the cracks over there. For Texas, I don't... When was the last time they had a hurricane like this? I well, true, that, but... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry go Delphi. ahead. I just think that um, with all of the states, and I, I agree with Vicky, but I think with all of the states, if we didn't learn Katrina, okay, and, and, and um, Sandy, that all states need to be prepared for all kinds of natural disasters because you just never know because that's what they are natural disasters they're acts of god so we can't predict and we know like um vicky said that florida hello y'all always get hurricanes of so i just think that all responsibility to, to um emergency shelter planes into the World Trade Center and shut down a major city like my city. You see what I'm saying? So I just think that if if they prepare, but there should always be a plan. Or something we should never that nature it, it, it's just crazy to me because we i mean we do fire drills naturally yeah you know we should be the one of the things i was always saying we need to make sure we teach our children the three things i've mentioned a lot that i got some blowback on inbox and emails and phone calls we should teach our kids uh, disaster planning. Like, who do you call if it's emergency? Like, I got this thing where, you know, back in the day we joked that we didn't know our parents' names and all this other little stuff. But we should know our parents' name. We should know how to get home if we get lost. The kids should be know their phone numbers, who to call our emergencies, all these other different things. Get your wills, emergency contacts information in the hospitals, what's on record. All I know, it's, I know it seems like a lot. So much is called. We in my family, we have those. That's that. That then we know that we need to start certain. You, you follow what I'm saying and stuff. 
everybody in their family, even you should have an extra strategy of what's going on in your home. If, if a fire breaks out or whatever, these are, these are normal life occurrences that we should be taking. I know that um, Vicky said that um, she, so I don't want to, One of the things that I did want to say before we went off the air is, is that I personally believe that there ought to be it is and disgusting that people are selling bottled water for ninety nine dollars. I think it is ridiculous of the things you piss me on price gouging. I honestly think that we and that we have laws put into place because right and, and that's where i was i had a big we had a big argument i wanted to talk uh before our delay I, one of the things i wanted to get into is the lie of uh, supply and demand but we'll get to that another day but i want to thank the both of you for your time and appreciation of everything oh Oh, and uh, Vicky J, I know you got to get going for what you have to do and things, but I want to thank you so very kindly for your time and uh, continue the good graces. Maybe we, uh, you know, we can get on this again, maybe this later on this week or next week. Always good talk. Uh, get to uh, about the supply, demand, and a lot of the things that you got going on. And Arthur Tracy Harvey Scott, I thank you. Deuces and everything else. I appreciate everybody. Uh, any last words, parting words, information you want to give out? Um, you can just check me out as Vicky J V I K double E J E A H. Um, Google me, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Just everywhere. Yeah. You assume just when you get your bank, just let me have a free account. That's all I ask. Don't make me have to keep fifty dollars in my account every month just to spend money or something like that. Let me have a free account. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And to author Tracy Hardin Scott. Um, on Facebook, author Tracy Hardin Scott or. Raw Silk, you can reach me at Raw Silk 15 on Twitter and Instagram and on my website at MissBossLadySilk.com. MZ Boss Lady Silk. Me. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Vicky, good luck with the baby. We'll speak soon, I'm sure. Thank you. You can come in, honey. And then, I'm out. And then I want to thank everybody uh, for uh, supporting us in Live and Global Media. We're on Patreon. So please go to Patreon and look up in Live and Global Media. We're on there. So we appreciate any donations, help and support. We can get a lot more things going on. Your donations go to a lot of different things. We can love to get you on as a guest. We'd love to get you t-shirts, a whole bunch of other different things. You know, also, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, new or news articles or whatever you may like for us to uh, reach out to you to come out or come out to your event do interviews do businesses where have you you can give us a call at 804-220-9551 or email us at enliven e-n-l-i-v-e-n-g-m at gmail.com you can also hashtag enliven global media we're all around the world uh twitter facebook uh, youtube you can catch some of our old videos formerly in live and radio now in live and global media we've got a lot of different things and a lot of our different groups thank you shout outs again to all our social supporters Lido pizza the crossland coleman group llc uh com gym lab we just appreciate everybody that's out there to support us and we love you we appreciate you and may you have a great and blessed day bye bye
When it comes to preparing for your financial future, there's no better time to start than today. In fact, it's pretty simple. I'm interested in what matters to you most and providing financial guidance, tools, and solutions to help you succeed. Planning for the future shouldn't be complicated. Let me help you make it simple.